Hey there, I'm not Dan, but in this video we're going to learn about the amazing properties of water. It's... Water. Amazing, refreshing, life-giving, and actually a little bizarre. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So behind here, I have our classic shape of water with our two hydrogens and our one oxygen. You know, now that I look at it, it kind of looks like... You think they did that on purpose? Could be. Anyways, so water is actually what we call a polar covalent compound. Now if you recall, covalent simply means that the electrons are being shared between the atoms. So what does polar mean? Well polar means that there is an unequal sharing of those electrons. Now let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so if you guys can see right here, I've got two rubber bands with a paper clip on the inside. And if I pull on the two rubber bands, you can see that there is an equal sharing of this paper clip by the two rubber bands. This is like a non-polar covalent compound where all the electrons are equally shared. Compare that to this, where when I pull on it, you can very easily see that, that while this paper clip is being shared, it is an unequal sharing because it's spending more time around this band than it is around this band. So this is what a polar covalent compound looks like. Water is no different. Oxygen here is a very electronegative atom, meaning that it is going to actually pull the electrons closer to itself and keeping them away from the hydrogens. So what this means is that it creates what we call a partial positive charge on the hydrogen side and a partial negative charge here on the oxygen side. Now these symbols here simply mean that this compound is polar. You can see this on any other compound, okay? It doesn't have to just be water. Like sugar, for example, is another polar covalent compound. And if we were to draw that out, you would see these symbols surrounding it as well. Okay, so this is what gives water part of its unique properties, but it's not the entire story. See, there's another aspect going on here. There's something called intermolecular forces. And just like the name means, right, the prefix inter means between. So an intermolecular force is simply an attractive force that exists between molecules, okay? So now this force, hey, stop that. Don't bring those copyright lawyers down on us. Okay, so as I was saying, there is a, a, an intermolecular force that exists with water here, and it's called hydrogen bonding. Now of all the intermolecular forces that exist, hydrogen bonding is the strongest. Now I know it's a little easy to get confused by the name and think that it's a bond, but just remember, hydrogen bonding is not a bond. It is in fact a force. Seriously, stop it with the copyright violations. So this force called hydrogen bonding exists between water molecules and very specifically, here, let me show you, it exists, okay, so if I take these three water molecules right here, it exists between the hydrogen on this water and the oxygen of this water. The hydrogen here and that oxygen. So this means that water is incredibly attracted to itself. Water is a polar covalent compound and it has hydrogen bonding. And as a result of those two things, water has a lot of really cool and unique properties. One of which goes like this. 
We all know that ice floats. But did you realize that if ice didn't float, that we'd all be dead? Let me explain. What do you mean this needs to go in the next video? But wait, what? Waiting on a train.